Okay, so this video is about the materials, parts and print settings to make this case. But after reading the comments to the first video, I decided to make a fat version. With support for longer graphics cards, taller CPU coolers and dust filters. I sized it for GPUs up to 200mm. But you could just scale the sleeve height in your slicer for even longer graphics cards. Though I'm not really interested in supporting long graphics cards. Far better to use the extra space for a front exhaust fan. It should provide great airflow and help overcome the restriction created by the dust filters. I experimented with low extrusion settings to make fine strands and came up with this design where the bottom layer is this large hex pattern with the fine mesh on top. This is to stop the mesh from being printed against the print bit which would flatten each strand restricting airflow. They just pop into some side rails that I adapted from some internal support bridges which I neglected to mention in the first video but we'll talk about in a minute. I've updated the files with this version of the case. I'm also going to make them free since nobody's buying them. I think charging for them probably puts most people off since you also have to buy the parts and figure out how to print this thing, something which the rest of this video should help with. Like and subscribe if you appreciate them being free. The models are sized for a 0.6mm nozzle, not the standard 0.4mm nozzle, which I find produces parts that are too thin, even when using double wall vase mode, which is where you cut the model such that you print two walls next to each other. I use this method on all parts of the design. The models are set up so you can split them into separate objects in your slicer and assign a different process to each one. This is what it looks like in Simplify 3D. The first object is a solid base, followed by one or two walls that sit on top. Now it isn't totally necessary to print them like this, it just avoids retractions, which results in a better print quality without stringing or layer shifts, especially on the tray, which has tall walls on each side. These are joined by smaller walls, which I've cut at an angle so that the nozzle doesn't clash where they meet each other. You still need clearance around the nozzle and to print the objects in the correct order to do this. The nozzle on my Ender 3 extends about half a centimetre below the rest of the print head. Some 3D printers don't have this clearance and may be damaged if you try and print this way. So be careful, you have been warned. Another thing I did to avoid retractions is to make little bridging sections that you need to clip off. You can find these around the Wi-Fi holder slots and around the power connector clip. The external sleeve also has these bridging sections, but they're bigger and there's a lot more of them for the ventilation slots. They also function as supports for the top overhanging layer, which still droops down a little, but isn't noticeable from a distance. You need to clip these out from the inside. I just remove them roughly at first, then clip out the remainder more carefully on a second pass. The final thing to do to the sleeve is to heat and bend the GPU screw tab at the back. I recommend using a torch lighter to do this. The model is printed at a 0.4mm layer height, with the model being slightly oversized for the 0.6mm nozzle, such that the walls are barely touching each other. I found this results in a better quality part, but you have to over extrude the final layers to join them at the front. Finally, the base of the front panel is printed with a honeycomb infill pattern. I find 50% infill to be about right, single outline. You need both PLA and PETG to print this. The PLA is for the external sleeve to get a nice finish without warping, as tall slender objects are quite prone to warping, even with PLA. So I added a slight bend to the external sleeve to counteract this. You can find the straight version without this bend in the all objects file. The tray and the front panel use PETG, as a computer can get hot enough to soften PLA. Though you still need low power components, you should be limited by the 400 watt Pico PSU I recommend anyway. You can find it on AliExpress. You want the B version with the connectors pointing into the motherboard and away from the front, as you won't get the front panel on with the version that points outwards. This may clash with some motherboards. You can see here how close it is to the RAM sticks. I have a Gigabyte motherboard where this happens, but there are other options. 
This 450 watt one doesn't have the connectors and will fit with the wires pointing out. You also need to put some XD connectors onto these, which requires a reasonably strong soldering iron, at least 60 watt. I'll show you it on the PSU side first. It comes with a DC barrel jack, which isn't good as this is a weak connector, not even suitable for 10 amps. You could cut this off, but you'll also notice that the wire itself is below spec. You can see here how thin it is compared to the 33 amp thin wall DC cable that we'll be using to connect to the brick. So you may as well desolder the wires and replace them with some of this stuff. And I recommend the 33 over the 42 amp version as I found it to be rigid and quite a bit more difficult to solder. And 33 amps at 12 volts is very close to the 400 watts of our Pico PSU and power brick. There is a doubt about this power brick by the way. I've used it for a while without any problems but it is suggested that it will do damage over a long period of time. I'll buy a cheap oscilloscope to test the ripple, but I don't have it yet, so I can't really recommend this power brick right now. Anyway, you can use a wire stripper tool a bunch of times to remove the insulation. They put a load of talcum powder in these that you have to wipe off, but once you've done that, you can tin and solder the wires. You want to position your wire in between or beside the wire and the solder point as this fine stranded wire can act as a solder wick if heated too much. I only figured this out while filming the video. As you can see, I'm doing it wrong here. It should be more like this. So, onto the XT connectors. The male one, which I thought was the female one, but apparently isn't, needs to be modified create grooves for the tray clip to hold it. Taking care to not cut myself, I use a knife to remove a wedge of plastic on each side of the XT60 logo, so that I end up with this shape. The wires from the Pico PSU are soldered at 90 degrees, so that when it's in the clip, you can see it is not only held by the grooves, but also one of the wires. You can rotate the pins on these to face the same way then put something heavy on it to stop it moving while you solder the wires. The power cable connector is just soldered in line. It helps if you orientate the sockets outwards. This way, you can hold the connector by the wires themselves. You may still need to apply pressure while soldering, but it helps. Once you've done that, you can apply some heat shrink to cover the connection. The final thing to do is to integrate the front panel components the power switch and USB module. It's a 16mm diameter power button. You can get these with motherboard connectors already attached. And it's easy to install, you just screw it in. You don't need the nut that it comes with, as I made the hole just the right size to hold it. The front USB module needs to be modified by clipping it around the screw holes at 45 degree angles, like this. It's a good idea to align the cut with the center of the screw hole, so it gives you a bit extra to clip off if you need. I sized the slot so it's a tight fit. Once you've done that, you can just push it into the clip at an angle, like this. And there you have it. That's how to build one of these computer cases. It may seem like a lot right now, but I think this is simpler than a lot of other 3D printed computer cases. If you appreciate me taking the time to show you how to build this, please like and subscribe, or even support me on Patreon. If not, then I'll just thank you for the view.